So it's time to start filling our stream with some interesting stuff. Now, most overlays today come in as browser sources. In my case, I designed my own browser sources, my own overlay. But if you get something online, this is going to be in the form of a URL. So you want to add something to a browser source. Now, the very basic thing, and we'll grab test two here. Well, let me move the transitions away. Just make some space. And here are our sources. Now, if I add a browser source, I'll create a new source called Google. It will make the source visible. Now, what it does here, it will assume the default. So I want this URL to be google.com. And we'll leave this as is right now. So we have our Google right here. And we can move it around and scale it. And that, of course, will scale. It doesn't expand its scales. So as you can see, this bar here will remain the same position entirely. It, it removed itself actually. But as you can see, it starts pixelating itself. Let's leave that there. So if you grab Google again, we can double click or right click in properties or double click actually right click there properties. And we have more options. So if we set the width to 1920 by 1080, that means we have our whole canvas to show. Now let's resize it. That's 1920 by 1080. That's the full size of our canvas. Now we can do other things as well. And this custom CSS I'd leave as is unless you know what you're doing. In my sources, I will remove them because I'm using my own custom CSS. We can use custom frame rate. So if you want it to run always at 60 FPS, you could do that. So you're running some game which runs at certain frame rates. You could do that. You can control the audio via OBS, which should, if I make it active, it will enable it here. So any sound that's coming from that browser source, I can control the level of. So this is a handy new thing that the people at OBS gave us. We can do, do a few other things as well. Let's remove that for now. We can shut down a source when not visible and refresh the browser when, seems becomes, when the scene becomes active. Now, shut down source when not visible is a thing for most sources. That means that when it's not being shown, either in preview or program, OBS actually shuts it off to save resources. I wouldn't suggest this be done on something like a webcam, for instance, because it will have to reinitialize the webcam every time you activate the source. So if you want something to be there constantly, you will keep it on and don't shut down the source when not visible. If it's something you will very rarely use, it's specific to a scene, you can shut it down when it's not visible and then it will reappear. There is a trick that we use in studio mode, which cannot be done without studio mode, because what happens without studio mode is you only have the program scene. So whenever you switch a scene, it will have to reload if they're shut down. But if you have to shut down source when not visible and it's not on program, but you load it into preview, it would have already loaded. So when it would have already loaded. So when you transition, into the program, the stuff has already been loaded in the background. So that works if you want to do it that way. It takes a bit of trial and error to check everything and see if they're working as intended, but that's a workaround you have. Refresh browser when scene becomes active means that every time the scene is available in either preview or program, it's refreshed from the beginning. So if you want something to stay the way you left it, you will not tick that, but if you want the page to always refresh itself when you go into it, feel free to tick that. Refresh cache of current page will help if there were any changes on the page and they are not visible. Say you're editing something on an overlay and it's not visible yet. If you refresh the cache, it will clear the cache on your PC, or actually on the browser on your PC when it comes to OBS. And it does use Chromium, so it effectively it's using a Chromium engine like Chrome does, and it will refresh it to reload it in your browser source. So what you can do as well, look, you can reset to default, but we'll leave it at this for now. 
And what we can do is do a local file if we want. And I'll show you that as well. So if I go to my overlays, and I'll grab one of the backgrounds we were using for the, uh, the Tekken tournament. So let's say we want the starting background. This is a local file. It's a local HTML file that has all the code behind. We'll accept that. And as you can see, it loaded a background because all it had what was a background. If I want to show you an extra source, let's do it again. Let's call it overlay tutorial. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to the same place and I'll use the starting and I'll do 1920 by 1080. These were designed for 1920 by 1080 and I'll leave it at that. As you can see, it loads the overlay and this is an animated overlay which was custom created and it is a browser source. What we can also do, let me remove this. Let's go back to Google and when you tick and untick, it retains the history of it. So you can go back to there. It brought up Google. Something interesting which we can do is we can right click and interact. So you have to right click on the source and what you can do, let me maximize this a bit so we can see, we're going to search. And as you can see, if we search OBS, everything is changing everywhere. So there's everything there. Now, as you can see, some things may not load correctly. There could be some issues. And maybe it's related to the custom CSS. Let's try removing it. Let's interact. And as you can see, that was the custom CSS doing that. And now we can effectively show people what we're doing without opening a browser, without showing them our screen. We can do it from the browser itself. So we can go to the download page. As you can see, we can close and then the interaction is gone. And that was how to simply operate the browser sources. Remember, if you have any queries, please leave them in the comments or visit me while I'm live on Twitch. And if you've liked this video, if it helped you in any way, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. In the next video, we'll be checking three different sources, the color source, the image source, and the image slideshow. Take care.